Hi, and welcome to today's episode. I hope, I dream, I wish To catch a big fish And I do it when I can I'm a happy fisherman And I do it when I can I'm a happy fisherman Today's episode is all about slimy mackerel. Distinguishable by the zigzag black stripe pattern on its back, this fish is known by many names, but it's most commonly called slimy, blue or English mackerel. First to mention, this fish is okay to eat. Mackerel is rich in flavor, but thanks to that oiliness, some people don't seem to like them. They seem to have many health benefits, but they really need to be cooked fresh as they don't freeze well. On the other hand, slimies make an excellent bite. If you chase snapper, gummy, tuna, you name it. When used as a live bite, they are super active. So they are attracting the attention of a lot of predators. But um, we seem to get them in Port Phillip by around mainly at late November till about March. And um, yeah, I chase them around Mud Island Port Arlington, the wreck, yeah. And there are many different rigs that work catching these slippery customers. And we will show you that in our video presentation. Enjoy. On the 25th of November, 2020, we were on our way to 20 meters of depth out of Werribee towards Mount Martha. The weather was just brilliant. 18 kilometers later, we were on the mark and the action started straight away. I had a paternoster rig that I only dropped 4 to 5 meters under the boat and slimy mackerel would attack it in the instance. On the other hand, TB was getting only undersized pinkies. That day, Slimy loved the small slices of pilchard. We did offer them squid as well, but they were definitely more interested in pilchard slices. In the meantime, Tibi put the burly bucket down to see if he can attract some bigger fish. It was amazing to watch as I was reeling in the slimy, other slimies would follow it all the way to the top. Later, when we checked the underwater camera down the bottom, we saw quite few yakas passing. They were about a meter off the ground. Top action was consistent and we managed quite few fish very quickly. Teamwork once again proved to be a very successful method. We had a burly going on the back of the boat, which kept the fish in the area. Pellets with a bit of tuna oil did the trick. Every now and then we would slice a pilchard as well and throw a handful. That kept the fish interested for quite a long time. Then Tibi decided to set a slimy as a snapper bait. He slid the side of the slimy first, so it was more attractive and then rigged it onto unweighted double snell rig. 
the area here doesn't hold snapper in one spot, but snapper do often pass through close to tight change. After casting it, we just had to wait and see what's going to happen. Underwater footage still showed no sign of snapper or even pinkies. This time, flathead only an odd puffer fish. In meantime, we were still catching slimy mackerel. We started having fun filming the slimies underwater and above. And then the sound we were hoping for. Ooh. The full slimy that we casted before was taken by a serious fish. A few head shakes and we knew it's snapper. Quickly we moved some rods out of the way and concentrated to land this fish. After we saw color, it was time to get the net slowly and we had this fish in the net. We landed this fish and it was time for few photos. The principle of what comes up should go down worked by putting the slimy mackerel on the hook. In meantime, slimies were still around. We played with them for another 20 minutes and then slowly packed up. That concluded another great adventure. The next video it's me and Zoran at Mud Island catching slimy mackerel. This time Zoran was getting the slimies on Sabiki rigs, loaded with small pieces of squid, and TB got some even on the whiting rig. The depth was 11 meters and trick was to target them just few meters below the surface. 
talking about Sabiki. That's just a five hook paternoster setup kind of thing with a bit of a fly on it. And this particular one is by Hookem. The fly actually shines in the water. And we put a little bit of a squid or piece of pilchard on it. And that's it. You just drop them under the boat. And that's must have if you want to live, catching liveys and that. This particular one that we use is size 10. Enjoy the next video. This video is from 18th of November 2020. Since November is a good month for gummy sharks, me and Zoran took off to Mud Island. The weather was exceptional, so we were in for a beautiful day. Our first stop was east side of Mud Island, 6 meter depth, trying for some squid. This spot somehow always produces squid, all year around. We managed half a dozen and we were on our way to Pinay's channel where we normally chase gummies. As we got there we set up the heavy gear and before you know we spotted slimy mackerel all around the boat. Zoran Quick set up a rod with Sabiki rig and it started. Bit of a grass floating around but that didn't stop us to have fun with slimy mackerel. Small squares of squid or slice of pilchard fillet worked a treat. Just to make clear, in Victoria there is no size limit for slimy mackerel and bag limit is 40. In saying that, yellowtail, or yaka as we call them, bag limit is only 20 per person. Mixed bag of two species in total is 40 per person. After checking the underwater footage, all I've seen is small flatties, few red mullet, and a red or flying gurnet. this shot you can see that I was getting slimy even on standard King George Whiting rig. The idea is not to drop it to the bottom, but have the bite just a few meters under the surface. As far as gummy shark, nowhere to be seen. Underwater we got some nice shot of flying gurnet investigating the ground. It is amazing to see this fish in action. Meantime, Zoran was getting slimies just about on every drop. They are fun to catch on light gear and as we mentioned before, slimy is a brilliant bite if you chase snapper or gummy shark. What's going on? It looks like you're pretty suicidal today. <laughs> on the way home, we stopped at my snapper mark and we managed a few nice pinkies. This adventure was just another great day on the water. Beside Paternosta, Sabiki, and running rig, we can even catch them on kind of garfish setup. In the next short video, we are at Port Arlington Oil Channel showing just another way to catch slimy mackerel. Enjoy! Here there is another rig that works for us catching slimy mackerel. I do normally fill it the pilchard first and then I cut it in small slices like so.
Then we use a garfish type setup with two long shank hooks and a small split shot sinker. I would bite the hooks with pilchard slices and then cast about 3 meters away from the boat. If nothing happens very quick, I would open the bile and drop another meter. Still nothing, I would let a bit more line again. And this is how I work roughly in what depth to target them. After you work out the depth, soon you will be catching hips and even doubles. Hopefully, this will help you to get your slimy mackerel bag limit. Alright, before we conclude this video, I would like to add a couple more things. Number one, slimy mackerel can grow over 50 centimeters. They actually can go up to one and a half kilo, and those bigger spaces are mainly in front of Cape Shank, by stride, obviously, by stride. We get them hips in Apollo Bay, and we get a lot of them in front of Lee Breakwater at this time of the year. Now, if you do cook them, as Mima say, do not freeze them. If you want to have them, you know, as to, to eat them, obviously do not freeze them. They don't freeze really good. And once you take them out of the freezer, they become mashed potato. The best way to prepare them, apparently it's on a barbecue or even better, you can put them in the smoker. So there you go. Um, the next thing I would like to say, because it's obviously November, November till about February, we do get big gummy sharks. And I'm talking 15, 20, 25 kilo gummy sharks. Most of those gummy sharks, they big fat, they got big fat belly. That's why, because they pregnant. And if they pregnant, they normally carry an average 15, 14, 15 pups, but they can have up to 50 pups. So if you accidentally gaffed or damaged the fish, do do us a favor and just cut the fish straight away open the belly and if there is pups just release them those pups will survive um there is nothing actually that's stopping you to keep that fish in any sense because there is no law against big gummy shark but knowing that the, in their belly could be pups just cut them straight away and that if if it is pups, let them go. They're not mammals. They don't depend depend on their mother, so they will survive. Other than that, we found I well, I accidentally found this big net by Hookem. It's actually mainly made for gummy sharks. This net actually stretches, so you can fit the whole shark in here. And yeah, it's a beautiful big shark. Take a few pictures, you know, unhook it, just let it go. Again, nothing stops you keeping it. But if you want to do just peace of mind and you want to let them go because they could be pregnant, there you go. You got a net to play with. Thank you. Rye boat ramp is one of the better equipped ramps on the beautiful Mornington Peninsula designed to keep traffic flowing even in the busiest of times. This ramp will give you a very quick access to the south channel and you will be in the prime gummy shark grounds in no time. The 
ramp is situated just south of the right pier, but one thing to keep in mind is that even if it is a great boat ramp, is that it can be dangerous on strong west winds. Once you launch, you must go to the left along the shore as the markers indicate, and then sharp right straight towards the middle of the bay. This ramp accommodates four boats launching or retrieving at the same time. There is a lots of parking spaces and the great thing about it is that you can be in a fantastic squid ground in just a few minutes. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we will see you next week. Cheers. I hope, I dream, I wish to catch a big fish and I do.